So good morning to one and all. I am Dr. V. Rohit Gopinath and today we will be discussing about another very important topic in general surgery which is metabolic response to injury. Now it is very essential that we have a basic understanding regarding the metabolic response to injury because surgery by itself is an injury to the body. It is a controlled injury to the body to be precise. So by understanding the response of the body to this particular insult or injury that is surgery or we might be able to alter or bring about changes in surgical procedures which would help in maximal response or maximal recovery of the body from the surgical insult. So going on to the metabolic response to injury. Now it is very important that we discuss about a topic called milieu interior. So milieu anterior is another is nothing but the internal environment. So this was a term which was coined by Claude Bernard who was a French physiologist in the late in the early 1800s and he said that every organism had a milieu interior that is every organism had an internal environment and this envi environment was maintained in a constant state or in a state of balance by various metabolic processes occurring in that particular organism's body in the organism. So this was further uh, improved upon and better terminologies were used and now homeostasis is what depicts this particular balance within the in balance in the internal environment of an organism. So this homeostasis is nothing but a coordinated physiological process which maintains a steady state of organisms. It is very important to know that any injury brings about an alteration in this balance. Once an alteration occurs, the body responds to this alteration through a series of metabolic events and the end result is that homeostasis is maintained. So this metabolic response of the body to bring about homeostasis varies depending upon the extent of injury. A minor injury, say for example a minor surgical procedure will elicit only a minor response from the body. So the hemostatic response is required to bring the body back to normal is very less. Whereas in the case of a major surgery or a trauma, return to homeostasis is significantly delayed because the body by itself may not be able to bring about homeostasis, might require the help of artificial sources in the form of resuscitations. Now less stress means minimal activation of the homeostatic pathway. When you have less stress, less injury, the amount of metabolic activation required to bring about homeostasis is less. Now, we must always remember that like Newton said, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So similarly, your response to injury or your reaction to an injury, it could be a surgical injury or a trauma of any sort, is, it depends to a large extent on the a trauma inflicted on the human body. Basically, the graded response that is the response to injury depends upon the degree of injury sustained. So that's what it's another example of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So greater the injury, greater will be the metabolic response on the part of the body. And the response is physiological, metabolic, and even immunological. And another unique factor or unique point to be remembered regarding this response of the body is that it evolves over time. So I find that it, it, it's evolving over a period of time. That is the changes that occur immediately would vary, vary from the changes that occur after 24 to 48 hours. So there is evolution of response to injury which has to be remembered. Now there are different mediators of metabolic response to injury. But the most important mediator is a neuroendocrine response. So the neuroendocrine pathway is a biphasic pathway. It has two phases. It has an acute phase wherein there is pituitary stimulation, elevated uh, regulatory hormones in the form of cortisol, adrenal catecholamines. And then there's, this is beneficial over a short period of time to help the person tide over this particular area of uh, stress. Chronic phase. Chronic phase, there is hypothalamic suppression, pituitary suppression, low level of target organ, organ hormones and it contributes to chronic wasting. Now, so what is this response that we are talking about, this neuroendocrine response? 
So this neuroendocrine response involves the following components. It includes the hypothalamus, pituitary, the spinal cord and the nociceptor receptors which are located. So once there is stress, there will be stimulation of the receptors and in response to this, there will be secretion of corticotropin releasing hormone by the hypothalamus. This corticotropin releasing hormone acts on the pituitary and produces ACTH. This adenocorticotrophic hormone acts on the adrenals resulting in increased production of cortisol and aldosterone. So, simultaneously, there will also be increased levels of glucagon secretion and growth hormone secretion. At the same time, there will be a reduction in production of certain important growth factors like insulin-like growth factor. Okay. So, what happens is that these hormones on stimulation, they bring about a stimulation of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So, we had already discussed about pro-inflammatory cytokines in the chapter on wound healing. So, the common pro-inflammatory cytokines are interleukin 1, 6, tumor necrosis factor alpha. So, stimulation of these pro-inflammatory cytokines can result in increased proteolysis, stimulation of hepatic production of acute phase proteins and also tends to bring about hepatic gluconeogenesis, stimulates the hypothalamus to produce hyperpyrexia or pyrexia and creates a state of hypermetabolism. The immune system also plays a very important role. We find that both the adaptive and the innate immunity, that is the polymorphonuclear neutrophils as well as the lymphocytes, they interact with each other and produce a lot of cytokines like interleukin 1 again to monocrosis factor alpha, which again add fuel to the fire and stimulate the inflammatory process. One very important point to be noted is that the level of insulin is very much decreased in the setting of an inflammatory reaction or during this inflammatory response.